That Mowgli guy, okay. I think we can all admit that Barry Jenkins established himself in the world after winning Best Picture with Moonlight a few years ago. And his latest picture, no doubt, is going to be within the awards contention of 2019 with If Beale Street Could Talk. If Beale Street Could Talk is written by James Baldwin and is adapted for the screen by Barry Jenkins. And it's set in 1970s Harlem and we follow the story of Fawny and Tish. They are a young couple that have been the best of friends since childhood but have actually grown close to each other and have fallen in love. The story follows the life that they lead after Fonny is arrested for allegedly raping someone when he was somewhere else and there's no evidence to prove this and he is incarcerated until trial. In this time, Tish actually has fallen pregnant and has told him that he's going to be a father and Tish's family now rally behind her to uncover and reveal the truth of what actually happened and to set Fonny free. Barry Jenkins really just shows love. Love in its most powerful form and it is a very powerful film for that. I have never really encountered such an organic way of showing love towards anyone and this is probably one of the better films that you will see this depiction. What makes it even more powerful is that Jenkins actually weaves the story of Fonny's incarceration along with how they became boyfriend and girlfriend and how they built a life for themselves and it's very well stitched together and we are going from a moment of happiness and pure euphoria to a scene of pure inner destruction. Jenkins always takes you to the prison where they are talking between glass. Uh, there's a particular scene where you see Fonny actually breaking and you don't see Tish's face. Fonny's looking at you and at that instant you actually feel like, wow, okay, this guy is caged and he shouldn't be here and you can feel his how scared he is, the anger that is building up inside for being wrongly incarcerated. And that is what Jenkins does best. He really just shows another world to us, just like he did with Moonlight. The film is actually a lot more subtle and calm in some elements. There's no real like build up to tension. The tension just erupts. But there is just this subtle way that Jenkins just takes us through this story along with this very powerful score, which we'll get to in a minute. And this just, it's very soothing and it shouldn't be, you know this, but this odd calmness really just takes you to this time. And I feel, I feel like that you feel a lot more emotions and you have a lot more to think and process during and after the film. I think the pinnacle point of this film and for you to fully experience the Jenkins experience is the confrontation between Tish and Fonny's family. She tells them that she's pregnant and obviously Tish's family accept it while Fonny's mother who is very religious doesn't accept this. In a way Greek tragedy really just brings Tish's core family together and that is what resonated me the most in this film is that family is everything and family will help you in your darkest hour. They will build you up, they will pick you up, they will help you as much as they can. And for me, that was the main message for the film for me was that family is everything. And I wholeheartedly agree with, with Barry Jenkins and James Baldwin for this message. The three notable actors in this film are obviously Kiki Lane, who I think that her performance isn't this powerhouse performance that you'd expect. It's a lot more quiet, it's a lot more tame. She's the narrator through this whole process and you can sense her feelings, but she really puts her feelings to one side because of her concern for Fawny. And that really just shows even more of her love. I think she's a very notable actress that I do hope that we will see more of in the future. Stephen James's Fawny has a big range in this film. He goes from this quiet, untamed artist to a prisoner and you go through this roller coaster of a journey through the eyes of Tish but 
really is about Fawny's journey and how he's really trying to escape from his incarceration and how he wants to sculpt a life for his child and his wife and his family. For anybody that has seen If Beale Street Could Talk, Regina King truly is the standout performance in this film. She is electrifying. She has probably given the best supporting actress performance of the year, probably. I obviously Nat Potts for Vox Lux is still my shout, but I think Regina King is probably going to be one of the big frontrunners at the Oscars this year. It just really shows how amazing Regina King is as an actress. She really plays this amazing mother that is going to go through hoops of fire and go to hell and back for her daughter's eternal happiness. And that is stunning. I honestly, I'm having goosebumps even thinking about this performance, but honestly, Regina King is an amazing homage to some of the amazing mothers out there that have done everything for their children. And the more I think about it, the more I think she is worthy of this win and the nomination, definitely. And um, I hope that what I'm saying is right. And um, once you see If Beale Street Could Talk, you will definitely know what I mean. If Beale Street Could Talk isn't exactly a masterpiece. I I do, for some reason, I think it's better than Moonlight, but I do like Moonlight a lot. Um, it's a lot more subtle. It is oddly paced in some ways, but it is a very remarkable feat of cinema from Jenkins, and it is another statement from him of his mastery and how he really is one of the directors of the future. My written review will be on my website, www.thatmovieguyuk.wordpress.com and all of my information below if you want to contact me is here. The LFF reviews will continue as we have promised and yeah, obviously, as we see on this channel, Deo danke, obrigado, merci beaucoup, arigato, danke, bitteschön, all of the shuns and obviously, never change.